in the vitamin shop. I'll check out the skincare and I also want to chit chat with you guys about any supplements they might have in here. I reviewed the Mad Hippie skincare products once in a Whole Foods. But let's check out their vitamin C serum here. What kind of what form of vitamin C does it have? The Mad Hippie vitamin C serum has sodium ascorbyl phosphate as its form of vitamin C. That's more likely to get into the skin than ascorbic acid, but it does have to be converted to ascorbic acid in the skin. This also has ferulic acid and antioxidant that has a skin brightening effect. It's a pretty strong tyrosinase inhibitor, so it can improve the look of hyperpigmentation. Looks like this one has a 12 month shelf life, unlike the, unlike the timeless one, which is uh, only three months. It's, it's 12 months, but that's because sodium ascorbyl phosphate is a lot more stable than ascorbic acid, but not well studied like ascorbic acid. What's in their antioxidant facial oil? Refresh my drink, it's been a while since I've looked at this. Sea buckthorn oil is rich in antioxidants and has a lot of fatty, good fatty acids that are nourishing for the moisture barrier, as does hemp seed oil. Unfortunately, I don't think that um, the sweet orange oil was a great addition to this because citrus oils can be very irritating to the skin. I don't recommend that. Sunflower seed is good. You know, facial oils, they act as emollients and give the skin a nice glowy, healthy, hydrated look, but they're not the best in terms of reducing water loss out of the skin. Where I find facial oils to be most beneficial in someone's skincare routine is if you're having a lot of, if you're having a lot of flaking and peeling, like from irritation from a topical retinoid or something, most people want to pick that off and scrub it off. Instead, use a little facial oil. It will help dislodge those shedding skin cells, but it isn't going to dry out the skin. That's that's a great time to use a facial oil, actually, is when you're dealing with a lot of peeling. Now, I've reviewed these products before for you guys, but that's just a little reminder. These are some of the more commonly requested products you guys asked me to review from them. This is Home Health Psoriasis. Medicated scalp and body wash. Salicylic acid is the active ingredient that's quite good for psoriasis, but I would say for a scalp product, just go with a salicylic acid shampoo because they typically have a 3%. Oh, it's got tea tree oil in it. Tea tree oil may be helpful for dandruff, but you guys know the limitations of tea tree oil. It can cause uh, contact dermatitis. It's not a pure substance. Compounds within it degrade easily. Do they have it here? They usually do have tea tree oil floating around. Um, yeah, it can degrade easily. Speaking of tea tree oil, yeah, it can degrade the compounds within it, and they become very irritating pretty easily. Like, I'm kind of surprised that this Desert Essence sells their tea tree oil in a clear colorless bottle that would allow light to go through. I went through a phase where I was putting a few drops of this in the toilet bowl to disinfect it. It was helpful actually. Ooh, Ancient Earth Secrets Indian Bentonite Clay. Bentonite clay is good for reducing. Bentonite clay can help absorb sebum from the surface of the skin and from within the pore. That temporary degreasing effect can allow your skincare products to penetrate better. So a lot of people like to do a bentonite clay mask. They're always like trying to make their own, you know, I've reviewed the Aztec healing mask before. What is this Mediterranean red clay powder? Kind of a similar principle. It's not harmful to make them yourself, although it can be a little messy and it can be drying. That's why I'm such a fan of the Cetaphil clay mask because it's got really moisturizing ingredients in it. Aloe vera gel. Oh, this, there was a shortage of this. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like people were really struggling to find aloe vera gel. Aloe vera actually has compounds in it, allicins, that can have a skin brightening effect, improve hyperpigmentation. It is anti-inflammatory. People like to put it on a sunburn. Does this have anything else besides aloe in it? Carrageenan, which is a thickener, and potassium sorbate. Um, that looks pretty good, actually. $4.99, just buy one, get one half off. Lily of the desert, aloe vera jelly. This one has vitamin C and retinyl palmitate. Those are antioxidants. May help with healing. No fragrance. This one looks pretty good, actually. This Lily of the Desert. That, that looks like a good product. Castor oil, as a reminder, very, very moisturizing. Does not grow hair. Does not grow hair. Does not grow hair. It's because it's so viscous, it deposits on the baby hairs that you really can't see. It makes them look thicker and creates the illusion that the hair is growing. And because it's so moisturizing, you can make the argument that's going to reduce hair breakage. 
So I'll give you that, but it's not actually gonna affect the hair cycle. This is one of my favorite Derma E products, the Eczema Relief Cream. It is so good, highly recommend it. It's got colloidal oatmeal in it. It's great on the face or the body. They also make a scar cream, SPF 35, that has, um, I think it has panthenol in it. It's just a miracle product. Oh God, the sea salt frenzy all over TikTok. I commented, did I talk about sea salt in, on YouTube or was it just on TikTok that I talked about it? I'm starting to forget what content I've created. Um, anyways, the sea salt thing, it's not harmful to use sea salt in your skincare, you know, put it on your face, whatever you want to do. But is there like solid evidence that using sea salt water on your face is going to cure your acne? No. This product, however, actually looks pretty promising for people who have acne, although unfortunately it's got essential oils in it because it's got kaolin in it, which is good for absorbing oiliness. Hmm, that one looks kind of promising. These bar soaps look pretty good, actually. Activated charcoal, that's also helpful for absorbing oil. Oatmeal, milk, and honey. Olive oil, coconut oil, shea butter. Hmm. Do they sell, speaking of oatmeal, do they sell colloidal oatmeal here? They don't, I'm not seeing it, but that is great. And you just reconstitute it in some water. It's great as like a, you can actually use it if you have really sensitive skin, you can actually use it to kind of wash the face or the skin. It's great to soak in, anti-inflammatory, full of antioxidant compounds. I mean, it is, it is an unsung hero. Ooh, what are these Nature Well products? Vitamin C brightening moisturizing cream. This has fragrance in it, which can be irritating. It has tetrahexyl desyl ascorbate and sodium ascorbyl phosphate and ascorbate. It's got a few forms of vitamin C um, in it. Vitamin C, you guys know, it's not at least ascorbic acid, which is the form of vitamin C that's most well studied for having a skin benefit. Not the most stable ingredient, difficult to stabilize, but uh, it can help in improving hyperpigmentation. This has coconut oil in it too. Now, some people with acne prone skin find that coconut oil, coconut oil aggravates their acne. What's in the collagen cream? Collagen is too large to actually get into the skin, but it can act as a humectant in skincare products, drawing water into the top layer of the skin and like it says, improving skin plumpness and restoring moisture and supp suppleness. This has dimethicone, which is great for reducing water loss. This looks promising, aside from the fragrance. Oh, it's got horse chestnut in it. Oddly enough, horse chestnut is good for um, lower extremity edema. <laughs> if you have lower leg swelling, horse chestnut, for whatever magical reason, seems to be beneficial. <laughs> I know, right? Who would have thought? Retinol Advanced Moisture Cream. This has retinol in it, which is good for increasing skin cell turnover, may help improve the look of stretch marks. This also has antioxidants, retinol palmitate, tocopherol, and ascorbic acid. And then it's got, similar to the other one, dimethicone, and dimethicone to reduce water loss out of the skin, coconut oil, which is moisturizing, but can be problematic for people with acne prone skin. This just looks like a coconut oil scented moisturizer. All right, magnesium in skincare. Magnesium is important for total body health. It's an electrolyte. But when you put it on your skin, it's not like it's actually gonna get into the cells and uh, act as an electrolyte. However, there are some studies, or at least one, that suggest topical magnesium may be helpful for hyperpigmentation. It's anti-inflammatory, and there's some suggestion that it may help repair damaged DNA. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of... A lot of lofty promises. Anyways, it's not harmful to use it. It's kind of like the sea salt thing. I mean, it's like very low risk. With this, unlike the sea salt thing, there's actually a little bit of data. To, there's more data for this than the sea salt thing. Magnesium gel. Highly concentrated gel of pure magnesium chloride. Apply a generous amount of the gel onto the skin. Hmm. $16.99, one of these flakes from the ancient seabed for body and foot soaks. Collagen supplements are not going anywhere anytime soon. They are popular. I have several videos on collagen supplements for skin. There are some studies actually supporting the efficacy of dietary collagen supplements for improving skin hydration and minimizing wrinkles. 
they have their limitations. They're small, poorly controlled, etc., etc. Overall, it seems pretty safe to take. Side effects include bloating, um, digestive upset, and of course, if you're allergic to fish, shellfish or fish, you want to be careful of some of them because they are fish-derived. And the marine ones actually are supposed to be the best. Um, the beef ones, I think, I can't remember what the rationale was, but there's actual evidence that they do, in fact, get into the skin through ra radio labeling studies suggested that the peptides actually do make it into the skin. Hyaluronic acid supplements are kind of similar. They, too, have been shown to improve skin hydration, but it's like difficult to say for sure if it's the hyaluronic acid supplements or just something else about what was changed in the study. They're not really well controlled. And the problem with a lot of these studies is that they're always using like different forms, different doses, different routes. So, or, you know, having the people do something else. But anyways, this, you have to be careful though with the biotin supplements. First of all, they can flare acne for some people and they can interfere with the accuracy of certain blood tests. They actually don't impact hair growth unless you have biotin deficiency, which is super rare. And they, they may help though with strengthening the nails, but not a lot of data for it. Anyways, they're popular. I used to take a biotin supplement and I noticed my nails grew, grew faster, or seemed healthier, but like, as soon as I heard that biotin supplements, as soon as I learned that biotin supplements can interfere with the accuracy of like thyroid tests, I was like, nope, <laughs> I'm done with this. So if you go back on my channel to like the very early days, you'll see in my vlogs I used to take it, but I don't anymore. And that's why. I don't know anything about bladder control. Sorry. I have to say, this place is not living up to its namesake because Sprouts tends to have more vitamins. It seems like this just has like multivitamins. What is Life Force? Multiple energy activator? I don't know what that is. Oil of oregano. It's an essential oil. Oregano oil has anti-inflammatory properties. It's got thymol in it and carvacol. Obviously you have to be really careful when it comes to essential oils. There's a lot of variability from product to product, batch to batch, and you definitely would never want to put plain essential oils on your skin. It can be incredibly irritating. Um, but the Carvacrol, which is what, this is 70%, um, Carvacrol and Thymol, they are not only anti-inflammatory, but they have antibacterial properties, may help in reducing the burden of staph bacteria, which can cause impetigo for some people, certain strains of staph. Oregano oil also may be helpful for candida yeast infections, like thrush. And if you get candidal endotrigo, like under the armpits, under the breasts, this ingredient may be helpful. But I would caution you against putting oil of oregano on your skin just because essential oils can be pretty irritating otherwise. But it's promising as an antimicrobial. Beta-glucan, this is a dietary supplement, but in skincare products, it's a wonderful humectant. It really can help with moisture content and helping keep the skin hydrated. Speaking of coconut oil, we have a, quite a variety here. What's my Boo Sabu? Do you guys remember when I was taking this? It's not delicious, but I kind of enjoyed it. It's really, really tart and tangy. This is really high in um, omega-7 fatty acids and that's good for anti which is anti-inflammatory. Um, I was really into taking this for a while and then I kind of fell off. Lipoic acid is an antioxidant that unfortunately has poor bioavailability. So taking a dietary supplement is whether or not it actually gets absorbed is questionable. But applying it to the skin, there is some suggestion may help in uh, reducing sun damage and improving wrinkles anti-aging effects by reducing free radicals that otherwise damage DNA and the cells in your skin lead to aging. Same thing with resveratrol, another antioxidant. That actually has some good evidence, at least when applied to the skin, uh, for reducing free radical damage. I mean, all antioxidants have a stability issue, but it, it seems like there's a lot more that we could be zoning in. DHEA. Speaking of essential oils, there is some suggestion that rosemary oil can help with 
hair growth. The data is pretty limited, so don't get too excited. Again, I would not put straight rosemary oil on your scalp. Definitely can cause a lot of irritation. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the shop with me. If you all enjoy shop with me videos, on the next slide will be my last one. But if you like this, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.